Hi folks, this is Mark by Mark A. Foster, PhD, for the Institute for Dialectical Metarealism. I wanted to continue talking about the dire situation in Gaza today, which is why I once again am wearing my eyeglasses. Um, the situation there is just so horrendous. Um, but perhaps uh, there are some good signs and I'm really hesitant to say that um, because in the midst of this, of this war, there have been moments when I've thought that we were about to see the end of it and the end just never came. So talking about good signs to me may be misleading or counterproductive. I certainly have no respect for Benjamin Netanyahu or for Joseph Biden for being the primary architects of this war. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, the executor of the war, and Joe Biden as the financier of the war. To me, they are together the main people who are carrying out this war. And so thinking about any hope, any bright spots, any, any imagination of things getting better is difficult. It is very difficult for me to do that. Um, I thought sometimes about renaming this podcast simply Gaza simply Gaza but I won't do that because I want to address other issues too specifically related to Maoism third worldism critical realism and intersectional Marxism so I'm not going to change the name although I am tempted frequently to do that, basically to make this podcast a tribute to all the wonderful and suffering souls in the Gaza Strip. But again, I won't. I'll keep it as it is. I have my glasses on again because I wanted to uh, read you another story or Parts of another story. Um, this one comes from uh, CNN. The title of it is Biden announces U.S. airdrops of humanitarian assistance into Gaza. So let me begin reading and periodically interrupting as I did yesterday. Again, this is from CNN, which I don't really think is a very reliable news source, to be honest. I used to think it was good back when Ted Turner ran it. Um, not that I always agreed with Ted Turner, but I thought that at least he was an honest broker. I'm not really sure who is running CNN anymore. They had this jerk in for a while who was doing nothing but but misreporting, I honestly don't know who is running the company now. I guess I could if I wanted to find out, but to be honest, I really don't care. Here's the story. The United States will begin dropping food aid to the people of Gaza, President Joe Biden announced Friday as the humanitarian crisis deepens and Israel continues to resist opening additional land crossings to allow more assistance into the worn, torn Gaza Strip. Speaking in the Oval Office, Biden said the U.S. would be pulling out every stop to get additional aid into Gaza. 
which has been under heavy bombardment by Israel since the October 7th Hamas terror attacks. <sighs> and flowing to Gaza is nowhere nearly enough, the U.S. president said, noting that hundreds of trucks, hundreds of trucks, should be entering the enclave. Biden said the U.S. is going to insist that Israel facilitates more trucks and more routes to get more and more people the help they need, no excuses. I don't know what is going to insist means. It has appeared to me since this war has started that Netanyahu is the one who calls all the shots, even though he is being funded by Biden. And Biden has just stood back passively and allowed Bibi Netanyahu to do just that. So, insisting, what does insisting even mean? Well, we'll see what happens. I, I must admit, I do feel rather hopeless. That is in my heart right now. But by the same token, I can't allow myself to become so hopeless that I believe that the enemies of humanity, Benjamin Netanyahu and Joseph Biden, are going to win. And be there no doubt, from my perspective, Benjamin Netanyahu and Joseph R. Biden are the enemies of humanity right now. He also noted that the efforts to broker a deal to free the hostages and secure an immediate ceasefire that would allow additional aid in. The U.S. military is working to carry out the airdrops in the coming days. Why not today? Why not this minute? A U.S. official told CNN, the announcement of the U.S. airdrops is an acknowledgement of the dire situation in Gaza where more than 100 people were killed Thursday. That was just on Thursday. Yesterday, as I speak, 100 Gazans were killed. When Israeli troops opened fire as people waited for a food convoy in the north, goes back to the comments I, I made yesterday when Bibi Netanyahu and the Israeli government talk about Hamas. What they mean is Gaza. What they mean is Palestine. To them, obviously this is just my own opinion. I could be wrong. But my feeling is when they say that, when they refer to Hamas, they are really referring to Gaza, to the Gaza Strip itself. I can't see any other explanation. Why kill people waiting in line for food? Do they really believe that the people waiting in line for food are predominantly Hamas? I can't understand that. And yet, I can. When I see that there is so much evil in this world, when I observe the multiple contradictions of capitalism, accelerating at an ever-increasing pace, how can I even imagine 
that this war will end or that the suffering of the people in Ukraine who are little more than bargaining chips between NATO and Russia, that that war will end either, at least not in the near future. The U.S. military is working to carry out the airdrops in the coming days. The announcement of the U.S. airdrops is an acknowledgement of the dire situation in Gaza, where more than 100 people were killed Thursday, when Israeli troops opened fire as people waited for a food convoy in the north. Eight trucks tried to escape the area, accidentally ramming others and causing further deaths and injuries, the eyewitnesses added to CNN. The airdrops will provide some relief, some relief to those on the ground. However, their use is highly unlikely to bring about a sustainable solution to the humanitarian crisis in Gaza, as each drop can only bring a fraction of the amount of aid that could be transported into the enclave by trucks. Biden made the announcement as his administration faces sharp domestic criticism for his handling of the conflict. Criticism that has had political consequences for the president during an election year. So let me get this straight. Now, obviously, this is the CNN reporter talking, not President Joe Biden. But at least according to the, the reporter, the reason why the Biden administration is interested now in bringing food, dropping food into Gaza is because of Biden's declining poll ratings for the, the November election. Well, I think that has been obvious for some time. What has been unclear to me is why the Biden administration has not seen that earlier. Why have they not recognized that if they simply stopped supporting Benjamin Netanyahu, that Biden's sinking poll ratings would stop. The only answer I can come up with is that Biden cares more about Israel than he does about his own reelection, which is hard to imagine. What president does not put his own re-election ahead of everything. And yet, it would appear that is precisely what Joe Biden is doing. He is putting Israel and its terrorist campaign against Gaza ahead of everything. But the real solution here to this is to try to get or to get to try to get or to get I should say an agreement which would dramatically increase the flow of assistance in 
and help with distribution problems and help them with the problems that civilians face of being able to move safely to get aid when it actually does make it in. Miller said in a, at a department briefing. Now, I assume that Miller to be in the position he, he is in cannot be a stupid man. He must have a fair amount of intelligence. And yet his statement is to help with the distribution problems and help the civilians uh, being able to get ape help when it actually does come in. Doesn't Miller realize that that is the actual objective of Israel to kill more Gazans? That's the objective. It appears to me that to the Zionist entity, Hamas and Gaza are literally one and the same. There is no difference between them. And so when Israel talks about killing Hamas, it is actually talking about killing Gaza. Same thing. Same exact thing. There is literally no difference in the minds of the brain-drained Israelis. That country, that country, what it is doing to a third world nation that is completely dependent on its help for virtually everything, including food, water, and electricity. And in fact, it's not even a country. It's an occupied territory. I, I don't understand. Earlier this week, Jordan, Egypt, the United Arab Emirates, the, the UAE, Qatar, and France airdropped relief aid on various areas of the Gaza Strip in a sign of how desperate the situation has become. Well, at least, at least some countries are helping, even if the U.S. is going to wait a few days. At least some Gulf nations are helping where they weren't before. At least, at least. At least is not enough. It never has been enough. There are discussions. Well, how do you do with Israel? and other stakeholders about a potential maritime condor, corridor rather, for humanitarian aid into Gaza, Kirby confirmed Friday. However, numerous logistical challenges would need to be addressed for the corridor to actually be operational, a U.S. official told CNN. I can't imagine that those U.S. officials are that stupid. I just can't imagine it. Don't they realize that Netanyahu's future hinges on the war continuing? That if Netanyahu were to end the war right now, he would be ousted from power. Somebody to his right in one of the various coalition parties to Likud 
would take Netanyahu's place, resume the war, and war crimes trials against Netanyahu would begin. I mean, they must know that. They must realize that that is why Netanyahu is continuing his terrorist campaign in Gaza. They can't not know it. It is so obvious. It's been reported repeatedly. Surely Biden knows that from his intelligence briefings. He must know it. The only thing I can think of is that he simply doesn't really care. This is a matter of life and death, said USAID Administrator Samantha Power, who met on Wednesday with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant. Power announced $53 million in additional humanitarian aid during her travels to the region this week. My question is, where will that aid be given? Will that aid be given to Israel with the expectation that Israel will get it to Gaza? I mean, there's nobody that I know of in Gaza who could accept that aid. So ultimately, is it a matter of handing over the aid to the Zionist entity and crossing your fingers that Netanyahu and his government chooses to actually turn the aid over to Gaza and not use it as an additional payment for the war? I don't know. But all I can think of is that power is planning on giving that aid to Netanyahu. Why? What is the point? Why not give the aid, for example, to Jordan or to Egypt, which has already been providing aid and has shown a willingness to continue doing it? Why give it to Netanyahu? I, that is, is not a question I can answer. U.S. officials have also held ongoing conversations with Israeli officials about the need to ensure the safety of humanitarian aid workers once they enter Gaza. <laughs> Do they really think that those Israeli officials care? The aid workers who, aren't, who are on the ground in Gaza and risking their lives to get food to people in desperate, desperate need, those aid workers have to be protected. I mean, Israel must know that, but Israel doesn't care. It doesn't care. So the U.S. says, protect the aid workers. Does the U.S. really expect Israel to go along with it? I, I can't imagine that. Convoys have come under attack within the enclave, both by desperate mobs. I can imagine when you are starving to death, you are going to join a desperate mob and by criminal elements. U.S. Envoy for Middle East Humanitarian Issues, David Setterfield, said last month, Israeli forces 
targeted members of the Hamas-run police force that travels with the UN aid convoys in a, an effort to protect them from looting, which has led the police to stop protecting the convoys, Satterfield said. With the departure of police escorts, it has been virtually impossible for the UN or anyone else, Jordan, the United Arab Emirates, or any other implementer to safely move assistance in Gaza because of criminal gangs, he said. Now, yeah. now, yeah. the solution, at least the immediate solution, not the long-term solution, but the immediate solution is to simply end the war on Gaza, a.k.a. Hamas. Again, the same thing to people in Israel, in the government. It's the same thing. It seems as though whether news agencies know that they're lying or not, I cannot tell. I cannot get inside their minds. I assume they I assume that, that they do know they're lying, or at least covering things up, because they must know that Israel has no intention at all of helping Gaza. Let me take off my eyeglasses. No intention at all of helping Gaza. So why should why should they believe that the Zionist entity will suddenly develop a conscience, get some spine, get some heart, begin caring? for those who literally are under their care, the Gazans. But they won't. Again, I try to avoid making predictions because usually my predictions fail. Almost always my predictions fail. But... I don't think I'm making a prediction. Not really. What I think I'm doing is simply observing what is happening right now. And the events on the ground right now do not give me any degree of confidence that Israel will stop doing what it is doing. They also do not give me any confidence that the U.S. will continue providing financial and military aid to Israel. Why? Because they're doing it right now. Even as they talk about this, even as they discuss the necessity of a humanitarian pause, pause, they are still giving the Zionist entity money. A pause is not what Gaza needs. Gaza needs an end to this terrorist campaign, which is literally destroying their land, tearing apart their land in an already overcrowded place where there is practically nowhere to move around. And the Zionist entity says, go there, be safe. 
And then the IGF bombs that place. And the U.S. continues to trust the Zionist entity. Each day that I read this, I am grateful for the fact that there are other people besides me from an Ashkenazi Jewish background who oppose what Netanyahu is doing. I'm also grateful for the fact that despite what is going on between the Zionist entity and Gaza and Lebanon for that matter, in the US, Arabs and Israelis have generally gotten along. People who practice Judaism and people who practice Islam have generally gotten along. The kind of hostility that we see in that other part of the world, South Asia or the Middle East, does not need to be. It is not foreordained. It is a choice made by evil people for whatever reasons they may have in their heart. And they are not good ones. That they want a piece of land, a piece of land for themselves. The claim of ownership or custodianship of the so-called Holy Land by the Zionist entity does not even have a basis in history. It is based entirely on the Bible, the Old Testament or the Tanakh and the New Testament. That's where it gets its support. For those who don't know, the Bible is not regarded by historians as being a valid primary historical source. The existence of the people in, mentioned in the Tanakh, like Moses and Noah and Elijah and Ezekiel and Zechariah and Malachi, etc., is questioned. No one really knows if those people ever lived. In the New Testament, the existence of, of Jesus is questioned. The evidence that we have for his existence does not come from the New Testament. It comes from the writings of Josephus. So, do we really know that there was a Jesus historically? No. But there is more evidence for him than there is for the entities mentioned in the Tanakh. Because there's no evidence for them at all. For all we know, they might simply be sacred history. Their stories, basically fables or fairy tales, and yet claims for land by Israelis are being made based upon those fairy tales, where the people who had been living there, which is historical, the Palestinians, Palestinians consist primarily of Muslims, secondarily of Christians, and thirdly of Jews. Yes, there are Palestinians who are Jews. And no, they have no relationship to the Jews who arrived to live in the so-called state of Israel. But before that time, there were no major problems 
between the Muslims, Christians, and Jews. They all got along, basically. The problem is the Zionist entity. It is the Zionist entity which caused the problems that are now being faced by the people in Gaza. For the time being, this is Mark by Mark A. Foster, PhD, for the Institute for Dialectical Metarealism. Have a pleasant day and an even better day tomorrow.